Good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to be with you again. It's a good while since I spoke. I got a surprise to be invited, and here I am. <laughs> um, it's, as always, a reflection on the readings. Uh, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us, enlightening us to, our, to understand the depth, the length, the height, and the breadth of His Word. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, the reading is taken from the Gospel of St. John, uh, chapter 5. Um, just before I start, I, I um, use these reflections in order to study well what I want to say. And the study leads me to want to read more and more. So I, I end up reading an awful lot. And in the end, I say, I'll just share some things that struck me as I was reading about John. And as you will see, it's very adequate for these moments we're living in preparation for a real celebration of the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Christ, the meaning of it all, and the, the reason why we have to celebrate. Um, <clears throat> Jesus said to the Jews, were I to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid. But there is another witness who can speak on my behalf, and I know that his testimony is valid. You sent messengers to John, and he gave testimony to the truth. Not that I depend on human testimony, no. It is for your salvation that I speak of this. John was a lamp, a light, and shining, and for a time you were content to enjoy the light that he gave. But my testimony is greater than John's. The work, the works my father has given me to carry out. These same works of mine testify that the father has sent me. Besides, the father who sent me bears witness to me himself. You have never heard his voice. You have never seen his shape and his word finds no home in you because you do not believe in the one he has sent. You study the scriptures, believing that in them you have eternal life. Now these same scriptures testify to me, and yet you refuse to come to me for life. As for human approval, this means nothing to me. Besides, I know you too well. You have no love of God in you. I have come in the name of my Father, and you refuse to accept me. If someone comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe, since you look to one another for approval, and are not concerned with the approval that comes from the one God? Do not imagine that I am going to accuse you before my Father. You place your hopes on Moses, and Moses will be your accuser. If you really believed him, you would believe me too, since it was I that he was writing about. But if you refuse to believe what he wrote, how can you believe what I say? This is the gospel of the Lord. Um, yeah, so just... Um, the first thing I'd like to say is that these readings have been chosen in order to prepare us to um, reflect well at this time of Lent and also to enter into a, a better and better understanding of the love expressed in Jesus' self-giving on the cross and his resurrection and our receiving from him the spirit that we received in baptism to be able to complete the lovely invitation that he gave us to love one another as he loved us. So the more we understand about his love for us, the more we will encounter the possibility of saying yes to his invitation to love our neighbor, not only as ourselves, but as he loves us. Now, this uh, reading today um, demands a, a remembrance of what we celebrated at the, uh, on Sunday when we heard about his cure of the man born blind, a beautiful cure, 
and the man that received that attention and that gift must have been very, very thankful. But those who heard about it, and in a way the Pharisees, accused them of breaking the law because they said the law prohibits to act on the Sabbath. And it, that it was on the Sabbath that he cured him. But then um, he presents himself as in, above the Sabbath. He has brought, he, has, he is the incarnation of the love of the Creator, of the Father. And attending to this man, he is showing that the Father continues in him, through him, with him, his presence. And so when the man cried out to him, he responded in, in the terms that the man needed. He gave him back his sight. And these people, uh, if they listen to Jesus, he, he spoke to them not as they spoke to him. They were accusing him, but he was helping them to open their eyes to understand what was happening. And he says that he could not be his own testimony. He, he would not be his own testimony, but he appealed to what they had heard from John the Baptist and by the testimony of his own works. And uh, they did not really open their eyes to that. Um, and, so, and he was bringing to the fore the spirit of the law. They were talking about the law, but he helped them to see the spirit of the law. And if you remember, two weeks ago we heard when the law was given to Moses, before the Ten Commandments were given, there was a beautiful statement which says, I am the Lord your God who led you out of the house of slavery. And the Ten Commandments were exactly that, steps to freedom that God wanted people to take together so that they would never again enter a state of slavery. It's a lovely way of seeing the law. It's not made for oppression. It's made for expression of the truth of the person in gesture and in word. And when the law is, when the commandments are not kept, then people are oppressed. And Jesus gave us the spirit which we need in order to fulfill uh, the will of the Father. As he said himself, I have come that you have life and have it in abundance. So let us pray that we are people who, if we use his name, when we use his name, it's because we are thankful to him for the life that we have got. We are thankful to him for his pardon when we offended that life. And we do what we can in order to walk as brothers and sisters, which the church is proclaiming so loudly today as the answer to the situation which is reigning, which is so prevalent around the world of conflict and war. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.